students welcome to this course on acquisition process in libraries please remember this is an extremely important area as a library information science professional you need to understand because this is a continuous process and you need to understand this process because you are going to be one of the integral part of it as you build the resources as you go for your collection development these acquisition process are and play a very very integral role into it so it is very important to know and understand each and every component which you are looking into it the acquisition and the collection development section focuses on the methodical i'm using the word methodical means systematic and topical themes pertaining to the interrelated processes of collection development planning and building a useful a balanced collection of library materials over a period of three of, of several years and acquisition library acquisition if you look at the definition acquisitions or library acquisition is the process of selecting please remember the word selecting and acquiring selected materials for library and information centers in all formats including digital items and maintaining the necessary records related to acquisitions an extended definition of the library acquisition is library materials are acquired through individual purchase approval plans standing orders deposit and donation cooperative purchases through consortiums are increasingly common for the acquisition of electronic resources electronic resources are also acquired from publishers as packages that is sets of electronic resources such as set of journals representing the complete output of the publisher now this is a typical acquisition process please remember this is very very important for all of you to understand this concept when i'm talking about resources it is categorized into four verticals books periodicals databases and audio visuals under books it is further divided into print and non print means e books under periodicals it is print and electronic periodicals under databases direct or consortia through through consortia and under audio visuals it is audio tapes or videos in a typical library system or an ecosystem all these four verticals are taken care of all these four verticals are taken care of and all these kinds of different format resources are available in a typical library ecosystem collection development is based on ongoing assessments of the information needs of library clientele user statistics analysis and demographic projections and is normally constrained by budgetary limitations because budgetary limitations why i am using the word budgetary limitations because you, every year a library gets a certain amount of budget to spend for certain verticals out of which one of the verticals is your collection development and collection development when i am talking about it refers to the the structure which i have shown all those four verticals books periodicals databases audio visuals so budget is very small so you have to do a you have to bring in lot of intelligence to you know give it a proper uh, allocation of funds to each one of the sectors basically the processes of the collection development the processes of collection development include the formulation of the selection criteria planning for new collections or collection areas replacement of lost or damaged items routine selections and deselection decisions evaluating options for access and format choice ownership versus licensing these processes are guided by 
a collection development policy which establishes priorities and facilitates decision making for procurement the broad activities which are involved in the collection development or the acquisition process the activities associated with the acquisition of materials like print and other traditional format library materials electronic resources by purchase exchange gifts or legal deposit etc including the ordering receiving claiming payment selecting and evaluating the supply resources negotiating the pricing licensing of the electronic resources specialized interests of the sections include collection development policies collection development methods techniques and practices for collection assessment use statistics materials pricing issues ownership versus access issues format duplication scholarly communication librarians relations with the publishers and vendors and utilizing emerging technologies to enhance access to information resources the procedures there are certain procedures to be followed first the selection of the materials are done according to the collection development policy of the library it involves pre order bibliographic searching of the library catalog to avoid duplication of materials then the selected materials are acquired by ordering them for purchase exchange or gift this is followed by receiving the materials checking their quality processing the invoices making payment to vendors or individuals and maintaining the necessary records related to the acquisitions process acquisitions is the first functional department acquisition is the first function of the library technical services other two functions are cataloging and collections management acquisition is also used to refer to the functional department responsible for all aspects of obtaining the materials for the libraries what you are getting for the library historically the acquisition decisions were done by the chief librarian and the actual ordering done by the clerical staff and this is still true for other small libraries now for large libraries with big collection as well as sufficient budgets acquisition functions are performed by a separate unit known as acquisition unit or a acquisition department acquisition process it is divided into three categories in a small school library or a college library acquisition in a academic library acquisition in a public library so you it is depending upon the size of the library the acquisition process differs so that we need to understand now the acquisition process procedures should describe all aspects from the initial screening to final selection it is important to list the type of materials that are collected why they are needed and how they are obtained in addition to the selection of new resources policies on reevaluation like weeding replacing repairing materials and gifts materials may also be included the specific procedures for acquiring materials for a, a library's collection will be vary between library types and individual libraries patron recommendations for acquisitions are often encouraged in all library types selectors are responsible for reading reviews and staying informed about current trends in purchasing and the library staff professional staff is responsible for making the final decisions about acquiring the material now let us try to look at as we are discussing on the size of the library now let us look at in deep how the acquisition procedure takes place in a school library because most school libraries have only a school single school librarian that individual is responsible for creating a collection to support the instruction literacy and students recreational reading material selection policies generally mandate that the library professionals seek input from teachers other professional staff and the students school librarians are also responsible for weeding or deselecting collecting materials following policy guidelines as well as making a decision as to whether gift items will be accepted or not 
For example, in a school library acquisition procedure in selecting the learning resources, professional personnel will evaluate the available resources and curriculum needs and will consult reputable, professionally prepared aids to selection and other appropriate sources. The actual resource will be examined whenever possible. Recommendations for purchase involve administrators, teachers, students, district, personnel, and community numbers as appropriate. Gift material shall be judged by the selection criteria and shall be accepted or rejected by those criteria. Selection is an ongoing process that should include removing the materials that are no longer used or needed, adding materials and replacing lost and worn out materials that still have educational value. Acquisition procedures in an academic library. Ideally, multiple members of a library staff are responsible for reviewing the material for purchase in an academic library setup. The selection policy should outline the specific areas in which a library will collect and professional library staff members should be assigned to select material for specific collection areas. Librarians may consult and get input from faculty about the purchase, but the final acquisition decisions are the responsibility of the appointed librarian or librarians. For example, academic library acquisition procedure Item selection is done by the professional librarians, selectors, with support from the faculty. Each selector is responsible for recommending material for purchase in their assigned subject areas. Selectors may work with their respective faculty members to identify material and make purchasing decisions that best meet the curriculum goals. Now we will look at acquisition procedures in public libraries. Ideally, in a larger public library, multiple members of a library staff are responsible for reviewing the material for purchase. The selection policy will outline specific areas in which a library collects materials. Those areas should be identified and selectors should be assigned for the identified collection areas. In a smaller library, one person may be responsible for selecting the resources. For example, public library acquisition procedures, the public library has a number of selectors on the staff, each responsible for a different level of collection development. The head of the main library and the deputy heads of the branches and mobile services have the system-wide responsibility for the overall selection and maintenance of all materials and formats within the collection of the library. This responsibility is monitored by the library director and assistant director and is delegated to these individuals as a result of their education, training, experience, and job classification. All materials and formats are selected or approved for the library's collection by a main library staff members within that division who are qualified to do so by reason of education, training, experience, knowledge of subject area and job classification. Approved materials can be selected for the various collections within each branch or mobile services. Unit by the branch library manager, mobile services manager, or other agency staff who are qualified to do so by reason of education, training, experience, or job classification. Now book selection, for any irrespective of a library, it is very, very important component. Whether you are in a university library or in an academic library or in a school library, this is one of the prime area where you have to focus on. It has been customary for the faculty and students to take part in book selection in the university. Library staff usually recommends general reference books and those materials not covered by departmental subject categories like books on library and information science, etc. Publishers and vendors are increasingly providing electronic lists of titles available for purchase, printed catalogs, and other printed announcements. These are being forwarded to the schools and centers from time to time. Besides catalog, book reviews in important magazines and databases are also a basis for recommending the books for the library. 
the library also circulates reviews of books to the schools to keep them informed about the new publications one of the important component which we also follow in our teddy library is that we hold an exhibition every month um we ask a, a quite a good number of publishers to display the books on the subject areas on which teddy works they bring in all the uh, new books and mostly these are on printed books and they display them in the library then we keep it in the library and make an announcement to all our researchers that we have made a display of all this library so please come and select the books once the books are selected by the researchers then we give those books for approval to the library committee or to the concerned directors and then the books are procured and shelved in the library so this is a usual procedure which we follow in our teddy library also the book purchasing procedure is a very very systematic procedure book purchasing procedure has to be followed by every library professional and he has to be meticulously followed because there is a lot of integrity nitty gritties are available number 1 number 2 book is a capital item so there is an audit takes place of the books so at the end of the financial year there is there could be an audit when your entire purchase of books where the purchase procedure was also looked into and if there is any kind of ambiguity then you may have a kind of a flag from the audit also so book purchasing procedure is a very very important component the faculty and the students can recommend books and other publications for purchase to the central library it is desired that the list of books requisitioned by the library faculty for purchase for e school center be always be noted through respective the deans or the chairpersons the requisition of students can be got approved by the concerned faculty and dean chairperson it will be desirable that books relating to semester courses may be sent in with one clear semester notice the library would then check for duplication and place the list of recommended books before the library advisory committee for its review some very urgent requirement of books forwarded by the deans or chairpersons of respective schools centers may be purchased with the approval of the chairperson of the library advisory committee or by the circulation to the library advisory committee members once approved by the library advisory committee member for purchase library staff rechecks the library opac to eliminate any duplicate orders are there or not see this is a very important need to understand the library then prepares the final list of books and obtains final sanction for their acquisition from the librarian a rector or a vice chancellor as per the financial powers delegated to each authority on the recommendations of the faculty the library may purchase multiple copies of only those books which are found to be in great demand but not more than 5 copies of any books are procured so these are some of the standard procedures or sops which are followed in a typical library ecosystem ordering the books practice now ordering the books practice the library will change the earlier practice of ordering books through a select list of approved vendors the library may now place orders with any well recognized vendors registered with the federation of book publishers or booksellers association of india or the listed booksellers or the cobo publishers association the discount insisted upon would be a minimum of 20% on the printed publishers price the exceptions would be government publications institutional publications and nil discounts items also in some exceptional cases the vendors charge the library for handling on publishers demand in case of multiple volume books and encyclopedia efforts may be made to obtain higher discounts on the basis of service and past records the review of the suppliers will be done on an annual basis so this is a very popular thing nowadays online ordering of books a system of online ordering of books and purchase of books by faculty during their visits abroad has been introduced 
whenever the faculty are in the need of the books urgently they may purchase the books for the library from online bookstores like amazon.com flipkart.com etc using their own credit or debit cards after checking with the library about its non availability and with due certification from the library to that effect same procedure of obtaining the approval and financial sanction sanction from the appropriate authority will be followed they may also be authorized to purchase books on official foreign trips in similar way such requests may be processed by circulation to library advisory committee in such procurements discounts may or may not be available sometimes courier postage charges are also included because mostly in the case of foreign books or so the faculty may be reimbursed full amount paid on such transactions on the basis of credit and debit card statements and the bill generated through the online transactions books purchased on standing order faculty publication the library may now purchase three copies of faculty publication as and when the publications are brought to the notice of the library the financial sanction for procuring the same may be obtained from the librarian rector vice chancellor depending upon their financial powers the government documents though library is designated as a depository library of all indian government of publications many government documents do not reach the library due to various reasons since they are immensely useful information sources for research therefore all important indian government publications have been placed on standing order like for example book india economic survey budget these are all on always on standing orders the list of such publication is to be finalized and should be approved by the library advisory committee from time to time bill processing since i have mentioned earlier that entire bill uh, books procurement system is a part of an audit so one has to be very meticulously looked into carefully looked into the entire processes one of the important components when you are processing the bills of the vendor once the books are received in the library along with the bills the price of each book and discount rates bank rates are verified by the concerned staff in acquisition section so that there is no ambiguity in it entry for each book is made in the accession register which has all the relevant details of a book like its price publisher vendor year of publication etc then the bills are processed for payment with the accession numbers entered against each item thus in acquisition section certifies procedure before forwarding bills to accounts the bills are up to the librarian by in charge library administration for expenditure sanction on the basis of approval by the competent authority as per the present practice the library follows the bank rates prevailing on first of every month for the bills from first to 15th of every month and the bank rate which prevails on the 16th for the bills from 16 to 30 or 31st of the month so these are some of the standard sops standard procedures are followed as far as the bills processing are concerned the gifts or the gratis constraints of space necessitate the library to stop accepting the books from any individuals book gifted from major institutions and other individuals may be accepted depending on their utility physical condition and most important thing if there is no space constraint subscription to print and e journals and online databases so this is a these things never get audited by in the library uh, domain but this is also a very very important area when the procurement takes place and because a quite a good amount of budget is allocated for this particular sector so one has to be very careful when he is going for a subscription to print or e journals and online databases school wise special center wise list of print e journals are compiled and forwarded to the respective deans of schools chairpersons of special centers before placing them in the library advisory committee meeting recommendations are received from the various schools centers to subscribe new print journals a negotiation committee was formed by the library advisory committee to negotiate with the online journals databases dealers about the subscription cost of each Uh, database the tenure of the committee 
maybe for a period of one year. It would be headed by a chairperson of a library advisory committee. University librarian is an ex officio because he is the person who is the ultimate responsible. Finance officer is an ex officio and the five, six members from the different schools of the centers. And this is a very strict procedure which is followed in several, you know, leading center of excellence organizations like IITs, IMs and all. After obtaining necessary approval and sanction from the competent authority, the print e-journals are subscribed, renewed to the subscription agents, keeping in view their past service records. Rules and regulations. Some print and e-journals are also ordered directly from the publishers. So in case e-resources are not available through any consortia medium, publishers of e-resources are directly contacted for raising the invoice. The journals are not a discount items. And under Government of India financial rules, that is called GFR, no tender needs to be invited for print or e-journal subscription. The bills are received from the vendors along with the price proof and the proof of the exchange rate as which prevails on the date of remittance to the publishers. The payment for print and e-journal subscription is made as per the bank exchange rates prevailing on the date of billing. The supplementary bills are accepted in case there is rise in price of the print e-journals and exchange rates. Each print and e-journal is considered as a separate item. The payment for each print e-journal is treated as an advanced payment. The payment is made from the budget heads like journals for any other head such as plan grant or a project grants if you are buying it under a project uh, projects. Selection and ordering process. Selection and ordering process of the resources in a library. Most departments have a library committee. Representatives who decides which items will enhance the library's collection. Faculty may submit orders through their department's library committee representative. Authorized persons may place orders by submitting printed order uh, cards, email, or simply submit an electronic order. Turnaround time varies as to the format of the materials ordered and ranges from 2 to 12 weeks. The selection time can also vary with the date of publications and productions. Some of the selection guidelines which has been laid out here is decide whether a particular title should be purchased. And you need to take a decision on that. Decide on the location for which the book should be cataloged. Decide on which fund should be charged. Does the item support an academic department's instruction or research programs? Does the item represent content not only available in another title in the collection? Is the title at the appropriate level for this university? Is the item affordable? Is there a already a copy in the library? Should a duplicate copy be acquired and send order requests to acquisitions? So these are some of the important guidelines which have been laid out for the selection and ordering processes. Ordering procedures for the acquisition staff, it is a detailed procedure. You receive your order request, review request to make sure that it is complete, that is fund, location, sector, selectors, names, etc. Check online acquisition system to make sure that isn't going to arrive on one of the library standing orders. If an unwanted duplicate arrives, return order request to selector with this information. And the reason for cancellation, if order is for an added copy, may attach order record to an existing bibliographic record. Decide on the method of acquisition. Check out order requests in national online databases to confirm information on order request. To learn if itself is part of a series. To add ordering information that may have been omitted from order request. Make, may check the books in print and other sources to make sure that item is available at what price and from what source. Select vendor from whom item can be obtained. If vendor is not in online acquisition database, set up new vendor record. Enter order records in the library automation software to generate the purchase order and create an order letter. Upon receipt, the order status is changed to in process as the material is passed to cataloging. Query vendor if order is not supplied on a timely basis. 
respond to any questions from the vendor about the format, edition, cost, etc. Reorder from another vendor if order is refused by its first vendor. Receive item and invoice. Check to make sure that the correct item was supplied and arranged for return of incorrect shipments. Update an online acquisition system with received information. Forward item for cataloging and note in online system where and when acquisition send item after annotating item with order number and locating for which item will be cataloged. Make sure that selectors original cataloging treatment instructions travel with item to cataloging department and approve the invoice for payment and forward invoice to finance and accounts department. Vendor management is a vendor, a company in the business of providing access to a selection of bibliographic databases, online CD-ROM subscription like EBSCO, ProQuest, Gale, etc. on a per search basis or on subscription basis. OCLC, first search and dialogue, usually under license agreement. Providers of non-print media are also considered referred as vendors. Currently, there are approximately 60,000 publishers around the world and more than 2 lakh publishers of academic journals. 2,000 publishers of academic journals. The vendor is defined as a wholesaler or middleman to which library materials are purchased. So the vendors sell products or services to a library. These are items the vendors buy from the publishers. Vendors can also be considered as an intermediary who connects the library's need with the materials or products to meet that need. The vendor can also be called a variety of other names like agent, he could be a bookseller, he's a dealer, he's a distributor, he's a jobber, he's a provider, he's a supplier or a wholesaler. So there are many terminologies which are used for a word called vendor. Locating the vendors. There are several ways to locate the vendors and the best plan is to use the combination of resources. A number of directories have been developed to help you to get started. Some of these include like library literary marketplace, international literary marketplace, guide to international subscription agencies and book distributors. Talking with vendors at conferences about their products is another way to, to see the ones which they are offering. Keeping up with the literature in library journals and reading their ads can be beneficial. Your colleagues can provide a wealth of information about the good and the bad vendors, what services are provided, and who are the local contact person might be. As with most things, experience will be a good teacher in this area, but also know that vendors are likely to seek you out. Identifying the players there in the publishing market is a distinction between a vendor and the publisher. The vendor takes direct orders and handles the distribution of the work or product to the wholesaler, bookstore, library or individual. The vendor places the order to the publishers on behalf of the library. Vendors can be wholesalers who provide an extensive inventory of full line or specialized products. This can include remainder books, trade books, paperbacks, etc. A library may also need to work with a fulfillment house. These are commercial organizations contracted by the publishers to distribute their publication to subscribers. An example would be the American Library Association contracted with a company to handle all standing orders of their publications. Finally, there are vendors who offer utilities. One of the major utility vendors is OCLC with a range of services they offer to libraries. Valuing the vendors, vendors offer libraries as a large number of advantages because they work with quantities. They can offer cost advantages and discounts that libraries working independently could not achieve. Multi-year subscription can also be negotiated at discounted rates. Like for example, in case of, you know, like we have subscribed for, the, you know, Science Direct database. So we have done a subscription for multiple years. So we got some certain discounts in the rates. Libraries can also use them to place one order for books or journals from a number of different publishers while processing only one invoice. Automatic renewals, notification of title changes or publishing the frequency and claims can all be routed through one entity. All these services are not free. 
a service fee may also be added based in part on the type of titles ordered how difficult those titles are to manage and the number of reports issued to the library vendors can also recommend titles to fit a specific information need when it is time to work out the license agreement with the publisher a vendor can assist with the negotiation if the item is an electronic resource the vendor can maintain the url and the provide technical service often vendors have better turnaround times than would be available from a publisher since their business is service to the library rather than publishing they often have very good customer service when needed now these are some of the categories or the guidelines which have been provided for choosing a right kind of vendor for a library how long does it take for the books to arrive the subscriptions to start or the load time or to take for electronic resources can they handle handle the rush orders can you get a regular reports on the financial front you can ask what kind of discount do they offer are there hidden costs like service fees or shipping and handling what information is included on the invoice how often are invoices sent and and can be the they be paid from separate funds when needed when considering the materials ordered ask what is the scope of their stock do they maintain a retrospective selection is there a cross section of the publishers represented can government publications be supplied are rare books included how many books in a test order sample can they supply of their service tasks do they provide out of print approval plan or standing order services these are services that you may or may not use but it is good to know if they are available if you need them it is also good to know whether you will be charged for them or even you won't be using them ordering procedures to vendors are order and return policies clear and fair how much information about an item is provided before the order needs to be placed do they follow through the difficult orders do they have good customer service does the library have a good relationship with the customer service representative how well do they they handle problems these are the additional areas for consideration for forens do they bill in us dollars do they correspond in english if this is the area you might pursue keep in mind that many foreign vendors do exhibit at conferences also committing to a vendor finally you will engage in some negotiation on cost and service keeping in mind that you want it all for as little as possible but the vendor needs to make money on the sale if appropriate to the product negotiate a trial period prior to purchase to be sure there is input from a range of individuals who would be impacted by the purchase library personnel or patrons this would be the first step on the ongoing assessment of the product and the company too assessment of the product should not be stopped after the purchase is made although you hope for a perfect long term relationship after the financial and time investments put into the decision that doesn't mean that you can't look elsewhere or negotiate for upgrades if the product ceases to meet your needs ongoing evaluation is critical to good library vendor relations to best meets the needs of your patrons book donations on gratis donations are a wonderful surprise for a library however gifts can cause problems if they are not handled carefully gifts for birthdays as memorials and for organizations are common it is important to have a policy regarding gifts develop clear guidelines for example you have the right to bid materials the biggest problem comes when you want to bid something that won't well, that was donated in a memory of a loved one use the following guidelines for handling the gifts keep a list of needs keep a range of expenses and the type of materials use the scholastic list available at book fairs always write a thank you note use a standard form and develop a policy for disposal of the gifts labeling and handling the money so before i end there are a couple of important points i would like to emphasize once again which are very important all of you to understand that in the acquisition process it is by purchase by gift and donation by exchange by interlibrary loan and the deposit on the copyright law 
By purchase, more enhanced is now in laid on selection and acquisition process, where we raise questions like which gives the maximum discount, which gives speedy service, which gives bill in location, local account, and which is more prompt in rectifying the mistakes. <laughs> the other points which I want to mention here, gifts and donations. So some of the important things which you should look into, like gifts should be examined in relation to the purpose and program of the library on a long range basis. All gifts material must be properly organized like purchase materials. Gifts in indicating the received on donation should be acknowledged, thanking a donor also. As far as the exchange is concerned, procurement of out of print and rare books that cannot obtain from any other sources, acquiring publications which are not for sale or distributed in the usual trade channel, obtaining own government publication on a regular basis, and using the best advantage the duplication of a library as well as his own publications. As far as the internet, uh, interlibrary loan is concerned, the main aim is be acquired for stock of the material which a library to be most frequently used. He will be influenced by the knowledge of what is available in other institutions. He will also be aware of the possibility for borrowing both national and international. So interlibrary loan is basically you know, between two or more libraries. Like for example, in our case, we have the very famous interlibrary loan center called Delnet, where if you do not have a particular book in your library or you have made a procurement order and it is going to take four to six weeks, which generally happens in case of you know foreign books. So by that, the user cannot wait for the such long time for because he needs an immediate solution for something which he's working on. So immediately what we do, we place an order to the true Delnet and the Delnet, the developing library network provides us the entire resources which is available in some other library in the country. Deposit on copyright laws. Some reading materials are deposited only for national library on copyright law. So only national library can get the opportunity, but other library can also collect the type of library on, passion on, uh, on the permission of national library. Like for example, in national library, Calcutta Belvedere, under this uh, copyright law, they get, uh, they're supposed to get all the one or two copies of each book under the copyright uh, law deposit uh, act they are supposed to get it number one in many cases some of the libraries like for example institute of economic growth they had a center for uh, world bank so uh, where every publication of world bank they get a copy of that also so it's a different kind of specialized deposit libraries are also created so monitor and evaluate the evolving procedure of library collections, both print and electronic, including importance of consortia and cooperative acquisition exchange programs and all. Provide information on collection development activities, such as guidelines on collection development, e-resources, gifts, and de-acquisition reading of library collections. So this is a typical example of a online library requisition form, which I'm showing you, where a particular user fills up with all his details and all, and it is submitted. And that is how a request comes and the acquisition takes place. So thank you very much participants, for students for you know li carefully listening to that. And please remember acquisition of resources in a library ecosystem is a most important and an extremely thorough process